Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are going to be finishing up Cooking Companions. Now, in the previous two videos, we did a normal playthrough. Of course, I went through the story and got the regular ending, I believe. I think there's meant to be several different endings to this game, and there's also some extra modes now. So if we go to load game, we can see we've got this new mode, which is called Nightmare Mode, and it's like a super creepy, sort of mixed up version of a regular game, and then I think we've got like the chompettes mode after that. So in this video we're going to be doing those two like mini game modes as well as hopefully getting some of the other endings for you guys. So it should be like a video where we get everything we haven't unlocked yet and completely finish off the game. So sit back, relax and enjoy part 3 and potentially the finale of Cooking Companions. Okay so it said you really should make a manual save right now, don't hesitate which we did. Thank you for getting this far, your bravery is commendable and will be rewarded. Thanks for playing, Dear Dream Studios. Oh, almost forgot. Nightmare mode activated. Oh no, you wake up in the bathroom again. Okay, we've got all blood everywhere now. Oh god. And that's the face from um, the game I'm Scared, which is like this old indie horror game. It says, this is my room. Do you see how dark it is? <gasps> it's cold. Look at the noose in the chair. But I can look at you. Look at me. Are you scared? Run. Quick, run! Run! <laughs> I am scared. He wouldn't let me run, I was clicking it. You wake in a cold sweat. That was kind of creepy. Look at the silhouette there of Mariah. Your surroundings feel completely different. Yeah, Mariah's presence is enraged. She's beckoning you to follow her. You get up and leave the bedroom. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. What a fitting end to such a horrible nightmare. You head to the kitchen for some breakfast. Okay. Oh, it's bloody in here. This will take ages to clean. I don't know what that, I think that's Russian, like some of you guys in the comments have said it's Russian, but I don't know what it means because I don't speak any Russian. So uh, you guys can maybe translate that. You take a few bites of meat, you lost more of your humanity. Yeah, if you guys didn't know this game is about cannibalism, so we're eating human flesh here. You stare into the ash pile in the oven. Are they still upset? You head back into the bedroom to take a nap. Man, this bedroom. Look at the state of it. Which one of them is causing this? Mariah? Anatoly? Grigor? K I think he was going to say Corinne then, wasn't he? You crawl into bed and fall asleep. We don't even know what the day is anymore. It's just blurred into one. Day one, uh, 616, it says there. Corinne. Oh, she's approached. Wake up, sleepyhead. Corinne? Corinne isn't here. It sounds like she's whittling something again. Did she escape the basement? Corinne? No reply. You head over to investigate. Man, I'm kind of scared. Oh, there's no one in the chair. It's empty. Another trick by one of them. There's that whisper again. Who's still missing? Corinne? Someone is tapping on the window. This is even creepier than the main game. Oh my god, look at him. That is very, very creepy. So that's Anatoly come back. I can't get the taste out of my mouth. Are you done, Anatoly? They're getting more bold in their actions. You head to bed to sleep on it. Day 61. Is it going to change to 617 now? Oh no, 666. <gasps> The devil's number. I feel like this is going to be a very uncomfortable day to get through. The sheets are drenched in sweat. You catch something moving out of a corner of your eye. You roll out of bed to see what it is. It feels like 3am. Nothing is moving around the bedroom anymore. 
just your imagination again. You head to the basement door. Is Corinne still alive? A cold wind blows through the crack in the door. Oh god, she was there. <laughs> That's horrible. You wake in a cold sweat. We're back in the bathroom. You wake up on the cold bathroom floor. The door is locked. Did one of them hide the key in here? Hmm. Where do you want to check first? In the garbage under the sink in the mouse hole or under the tub? Let's check under the... Actually, the, the mouse hole, I reckon. The mouse hole seems perfectly rounded, like someone used sandpaper on the edges. Did the chompettes do this? The hole itself is pitch black. Would the flashlight be helpful? It might aggravate whatever horror lies in wait. I'm just going to try it. Stick your arm into the mouse hole. Go on, let's try it. You slowly put your entire arm inside the mouse hole and feel around. Oh no! You feel the chilly presence of something behind you. The key is pushed into your hand. You pull your arm out, lifting up the toilet seat to take a celebratory bathroom break. <laughs> your hands are shaking uncontrollably from the whisper. Ugh. The key has fallen into the toilet. I thought that was something else then. Reach into the filthy toilet to get the key? Well, we have to, otherwise we're stuck in here forever. This is the only way to get out of the bathroom. You plunge your hand into the toilet, grasping blindly for the key. It must have gone down the pipe. Here's Raspberry. She says, oh wow. Raspberry! You really put your hand in a filthy, backed up toilet, huh? This seems to be a new low for you, haha. <laughs> I think Raspberry's meant to like represent Corinne. Are you finally going to wash your hands now? The sink isn't working. Oh. oh wow. Will the bacteria be the thing that does you in? Such a pathetic end for such a terrible life. Haha. <laughs> that key wasn't even for the bathroom door. That was the key to the Chompette's treasure box. You really stepped in it this time. Well, we saw the treasure location earlier in our playthrough, so we actually know where that is. Cabbage told me I had to rescue you from this. I wanted to let you starve to death in here, but she insisted. Here you go. Raspberry unlocks the bathroom door. This is the last favour you'll ever get from me. Goodbye, wretch. You let out a deep breath and exit the bathroom. Hmm. So we didn't get the treasure key, we didn't get the bathroom key. It's time to end this. You open the door and get ready for what's next. Oh man, it's just a staircase. Nothing to be scared of. Not so sure about that, but here we go. You begin your descent. Oh, something's there. The spirits aren't active right now. You continue downward. <laughs> that is creepy. What is that sound? The walls down here, they're dirt and soot. So it's behind us. It's nothing. You keep moving downward. The air pressure down here feels greater. You're getting closer to Corinne with each step. Something is approaching. What is this going to be one of the other ghosts again? Because this is like repeating the end sequence, isn't it? I don't like this. It's going to jump scare us, I reckon. Uh, come on. A false alarm, okay. Are the spirits below going to spring a trap on you? You continue downward. Oh, it's all bloody down here. You hear something in the distance. It's like a baby sound, that's weird. Very strange, okay. What was that? Just gonna head down further. Ugh, this is horrible. I'm just waiting for something to jump out. Anybody there? Oh god, there's a face. Can you see that guy? I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll brighten it slightly. 
Oh, it's speaking to us. Is that like uh, Spanish? I'm not going to try and read that. I don't want to offend anybody with my terrible, like, uh, <laughs> sort of comprehension skills. You shake your head. Oh? It's just more... I think it's Spanish. I think this is Spanish. Um, but it could... It might not be. It might not be. And now they seem to have gone away again. And it sounded like a baby, didn't it? It was weird. We saw like a little face in the, in the darkness. You hold your breath and continue downward. Okay, let's keep going. It's got even bloodier. Look at all this blood everywhere. Something is approaching. Oh, there is something at the bottom. Oh, man. That was from uh, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. This game is purely fictitious. It cannot harm you in any way, shape, or form. When you regain your consciousness, you're further down the staircase. So there's lots of like little, um, I like this, there's lots of little cameos by horror games in this. Horror games that I've actually played as well. You awake with a note next to your head. It's difficult to read, but you can make out a sentence. Don't get up before Saturday. Okay. You take the Saturday note with you. The sound of the rain has completely stopped down here. Your eyes are strained down here. The pressure is intense. You feel like you're trapped into miles of ocean. You continue downwards. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel right. You navigate the base... That is creepy. You navigate the basement blindly until you reach the room with four directions. You can barely make out the outlines of door frames in each direction. Which way should you go? Oh, I don't remember this because in the sort of main game, in the main story, it does tell you the directions you take when you get to the bottom of the staircase. I think the first one was like east and then it was west. Your hands run across a large door. Maybe now isn't the time for this. You walk back to the basement steps trying to remember why you came this far. Found you, says Corinne. Oh no. Here she is. Let's end this. We've got to fight her again. Right. Um, let's end this then. Oh, we don't have to even fight her. We just kill her again. Oh, okay. That was... Um, a bit more brutal than the last time. That was kind of insane. Corinne escapes down the hallway, leaving a trail of blood behind her. I don't think she'll be alive after that. You follow her to the room in the east. Okay, good. Oh, wow, that is pretty horrifying. She says, turn on the light. Reap what you have sown. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, Corinne, I'll never forget you. The nightmare is over. Okay, that's nightmare mode. And now we've got happy music playing. Which we didn't have when we first beat the game. We've got a song. Like this. Uplifting. But please do refrain from going in the basement. Well, we we didn't refrain from that. We went in multiple times, in fact. Just might end cooking companions. Don't trust that onion. It really reminds me of Doki Doki Literature Club because that has a song when you get the true ending as well. Anyway, that's the end, I think. I guess it's not the true ending because they said that was like a fun bonus mode. Uh, but that's nightmare mode, guys. And now we've got Chompette's cabin courses. And it looks very Cuphead-like, doesn't it? In fact, isn't that potato actually from Cuphead, that exact sprite? I don't know. It looks like it is. Oh, here we go. We've got all the Chompettes. So this is like another mini game, I think. Hello, Cabbage. This is more my kind of game now. It's happy. It's like Animal Crossing kind of vibes. Welcome to Chompette's Cabin Courses. 
We miss school too much, so we want to bring it back. Honest. I'll be playing the role of teacher today. You can call me Miss Cabbage if you like. Let's just roll with it, all right? It's going. Can't wait to learn some new things today. This is interesting as well, because if you remember the order of people in the cabin originally, right? This is where Corinne was stood, and she's a raspberry, I've always assumed. This is where Mariah would have been, and that's where the onion is. This is where Cabbage obviously stood, and that's Anatoly. And then Bread is going to be uh, Gregor, I assume. And then we would be Potato, the kind of morbid dark one who knows all about how to, like, I don't know, like, conserve energy and how to, like, cut up human, human remains and stuff. So I don't know if that kind of is correct, that theory, but... I think these all line up with characters from the story and we're meant to be the potato character. He's like an outcast and people said like he's done terrible things and stuff. Anyway, let's just carry on with this. Aren't you excited, potato? I dropped out of grade school so I could work as at the butcher. Yeah, this is us, I think. That's extremely depressing, says Raspberry. Explains everything so far, says Bread. Is he quiet because he doesn't want to sound held back? You three are terrible at whispering. They never learned their inside voices, Potato. Cabbage looks you right in the eyes. There's no dumb questions or wrong answers today. The Chompet's cabin courses are designed to let you passively learn. Your brain is porridge right now, right? These courses will be perfect for that. That's correct, Onion. And the best part? No silly humans to interrupt anything. You ask about the dead humans. Ha ha ha. Ghosts aren't real silly. You ask about... That's enough, says Cabbage. No questions about the ghost today. Save it for a practicing medium, Stinky. Bread says, got a cornbread classic for you. What's a ghost's favorite food? Booberry. Raspberry says, you need to get bread a joke book. These puns are pathetic. <laughs> Let the learning begin, says Cabbage. You decide to listen to the chompettes. Although you have the feeling something else is at play. Cabbage. For the first lesson, let's talk about that nasty oven. One of us was baked into a crust, says Raspberry. You threw half of it away without hesitation. Human life is completely disposable to you. That's enough. I seem to have lost my place in the teaching curriculum. Ooh, Let's talk about the cauldron instead. The first cauldron discovered dates back to the Bronze Age, which took place 3100 BC to 300 BC. You can see a cauldron in the famous artwork, The Garden of Earthly Delights, where a bird man is wearing one like a crown as he eats and poops people down into a hellhole below. Lovely. Yikes. Wouldn't want to fall into that hellhole. Most of us were placed in this cauldron, says Raspberry, stewing for a day straight. The smell was so foul. Clung to all the linens in the cabin. Absolutely revolting. Cabbage? Raspberry? Need to speak with you for a minute, in private. So they've gone. The two awkwardly leave for the bedroom, slamming the door behind them. You can hear Cabbage chewing out raspberry. Bread says, uh... What is another name for Brussels sprouts? <coughs> Cabbage Patch Kids. Bread, that wasn't even a pun. Or a joke. It was more like a stalling. They're back. Cabbage and Raspberry join the group again. Cabbage. Raspberry, is there something you'd like to say? Raspberry. There is, Cabbage. You've committed crimes against humanity. You're a scourge on this earth, sent to punish us. Cabbage may forgive you, but I never will. Wow, look at the time, says Cabbage. <laughs> this concludes the Chompette's cabin courses. Did you learn anything this time? Or did you just loaf around? Are you remembering it yet? Yeah, so this is kind of like just a bit more story exposition so that we understand fully what did happen. Uh, it just clarifies things. So Onion says, just join me in the boiling water sometime. 
really loosens the meat off those old bones. Right in that nasty oven. There's nothing but a big pile of ashes in the oven. Have you seen that knife? Yikes, big enough to cleave cabbage in two. Potato says, still leftovers in here. Dig in. The rules are different for people that die in the cabin. Everyone that does will know the kitchen well. The lucky ones are dead when cooked. The others? The others have told us what you did to them. How many generations died brutally at your hands before you gave up? Was it your arthritis that stopped you? Or did you eventually feel remorse? That's enough. Thanks for playing along today. It was fun to revisit some old topics. Let's sleep on some of this, shall we? We've made your bed. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Okay, and that's the game done again. So I think that is maybe like just so we can get a little bit more story, as I said before. Um, we kind of understand what's going on mostly now, I think. I don't know if there's like any more to do like after we complete the game there, like if we can get extra endings, I assume there is. Welcome to New Game Plus. This playthrough will have different dialogue, events and decisions to make. Anatoly, Gregor and Kryn will start with three hearts each. Use this opportunity to max out your relationships. We highly recommend you create a manual save right now for this shorter playthrough. Okay, so we've created our save file, guys. We're going to go for the new game plus now and see what this has in store for us. It says, unfortunately, Mariah will not be able to be maxed. Sorry. Thank you for playing Cooking Companions. We hope you enjoy the experience. Or you hope you enjoyed the experience. Oh, and almost forgot. Jump scare mode activated. Oh, no. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if I trust that. I feel like it might be activated. Oh, so this is the part where, like, Mariah is about to leave the cabin. So we're already up to that part in the story. And that's where we play from. Yeah, so I'm just going to skip through this because we have already seen all this stuff. Uh, she's basically saying, I'll keep you alive. I promise. And she leaves. Everybody watches as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. <gasps> ah, and so this is, yeah, this is where the game starts from now. Cooking Companions. I feel like this is going to be like a creepier playthrough than our first time. Like maybe it's going to be a bit darker, a bit more sinister. After the three go to bed, you finally have an opportunity to use the bathroom. <sighs> the candle blows out. I remember this. Yeah. Okay. Grasp blindly for the door. Yeah. Now we have to like look around and see if we can find stuff in the darkness. Last time I found cabbage straight away. So this time I'm going to try and see if I can see anything. Yeah, look, there's some stuff in here. This bathtub is filthy. It will need more than a little elbow grease to get these stains out. Hmm. You notice a note underneath the bathtub. Ah, we didn't have this last time. May 4th, 1794. This notice shall serve as a summons to the Zacopane Courthouse. You are being accused of the following crimes. Public disturbance, foul language and demeanour, refusal to testify at previous court cases, and refusal to agree to a search warrant of your property. Your hearing is scheduled for October 20th. Failure to attend will result in your immediate arrest and penalties up to hanging. Sincerely, Judge... Okay, so that's a bit more lore we have about potentially our character here. You take the court summons letter with you. Okay, so that's a secret note. Now what else is there? Someone forgot to restock the toilet paper. Beyond disgusting. This truly is the scariest thing you've seen. With your interest waning, you decide to leave the bathroom. So no cabbage that time. Time to surprise the others. You take out a cutlet of meat and begin to cook in the oven. Oh. You cooked meat. Why is it coming towards us like that? Man, I hate this music as well. Corinne's come in. Where did you get that? You ignore Corinne's question. What's that smell? Gregor finally gets off the couch. 
yeah, we've we've seen this already, so I am going to skip through this, guys. Free looking at you, salivating. Basically, they want the meat. This is exactly the same as before. So we're just going to skip this, and we're going to see what happens that's different. They eat the meat, of course. He's not happy about it. Because I think he knows... Well, I think they all suspect where it's come from, right? But they know that it's like Mariah's meat. So Corinne leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? I am going to speak with... In fact, I'm going to save it. I am going to go with Gregor this time. Try and max out our trust meter with Gregor. Because we didn't really speak to Gregor in the first playthrough. He says, hey, thanks for cooking the meat earlier. I was nearly passing out from the hunger pangs. Even if I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, I appreciate the vegetarian dishes you made earlier. You really respected Mariah's boundaries. Thank you. Gregor is more dense than you gave him credit for. Huh. If there's extras, slip me some extra meats. Okay. Gregor will remember that. So we should raise our bond to four now with Gregor. Yep, your relationship is stronger. Nice. Going to see how Anatoly is doing. Later. You have the bedroom all to yourself. Where do you want to check first? Oh, can we check under the floorboard? I really want to see what's under the floorboard. You notice a bone sticking out. Is it a human bone? Nope. Chicken bone. Gross. What else is under the floorboard though? The floorboard looks a little loose. You could probably try to pull it up to see underneath it. You're far too weak to pull up that floorboard. Alright, let's have a look at under the beds then. You look under both of the beds. Just some dust and hair. Gross. Let's check again. You decide to inspect one of the hairs under the bed. It's long and red. Has to be Corinne's hair. You inspect another piece of hair. It appears to be black. Anatoly? You find a small box in the corner. Ooh. That must have been your imagination. There's nothing but hair and dust down here. Better look next time. Inside the nightstand. The drawer has various children's toys in it. What's this? Oh, what is that? June 26th, 1862. Another body of a child has been discovered within the city of Zakopane, with the remains stuffed into a barrel full of potatoes. The cause of death was identical to earlier victims, with significant blood loss due to multiple stab wounds to the stomach. This marks the fourth victim by the butcher of Zakopane in less than a month. I think that's meant to be us, right? So that was set in 1862. You take the bloody newspaper with you. We've now found three or five secret notes. Hours passed, the meal gave everybody the perseverance to keep going. The hunger is now permanently within them. They're fine now, but soon they'll be begging for more. We've waited long enough, what's for dinner? Oh yeah, this is, again, something we've seen before in part two, guys, if you're interested to see it, where they want um, more meat and they basically beg for more meat. But you sort of refuse. So any bits we've seen already, I am going to skip over. Right. On to day nine. You wake up to see Gregor looking out of a window. He turns to you, not smiling. Take a look out the window, do you notice anything? Yeah, this is where we see that the sort of rain has stopped. Floodwaters receded, but we're st still bound to the cabin. The trail used to be completely visible, says Gregor, it's gone now. Oh my god! Look at his face! I'm sure that didn't happen last time. Good morning, big guy. I think we should have another piece of meat for breakfast. It's what she would have wanted. I think he's right. Please bring us more of that meat. 
you grab some of the meat from your secret hiding place. You cut it into squares, adding it to the boiling cauldron water. It will taste bland without any seasoning, but you serve it up right away. What's taking so long? Oh yeah, I actually remember this scene. We have seen this before. It's almost done patience and he starts crying. Serve the meat in bowls. Here we go. They all look really sad. Gregor drinks the broth first. Yeah, okay, we've seen all this. I'm just going to skip over this, guys. We have seen all of this before. You go to bed ravenous. Something is approaching. What is approaching? Oh, it's potato. Time to wake up. You ask potato where the chompettes are. Cabbage, onion, raspberry, and bread? They've moved on. Just us now. Oh, so this is different. So, yeah, this didn't happen in our previous playthrough. Potato says, this is the way it always should have been. So it's just us and Potato now. All the other chompettes have gone. Your mind finally manages to forget everything that happened. You fall asleep again, still ravenous. Okay, so the story is changing on New Game Plus. It isn't exactly the same, even though many parts are. You have a strange dream. You're walking down the steps when you trip and fall. You snap every bone on the way down, landing in the basement as a writhing pile of flesh and bones. The whispers surrounding you, their laughter ringing in your ears. You wake in a cold sweat. Something smells terrible in the living room. Anatoly puked in one of the corners. Yes, we've seen this bit again. This is the same once again. This is where they sort of get ready to send him out. Good morning, little guy. Yeah, okay. I'm going to skip through this again until it changes, guys. We have seen this. The group disperses. Tensions seem to be rising. You have one hour to kill, so what do you want to do? So we can speak with Anatoly near the basement or Gregor in the living room. I'm going to go and speak to Gregor again to raise his... Um, heart meter but I think what we should have done is chat with Anatoly because then we could have raised his meter to five if we'd spoke to him twice now but I'll speak to Gregor again hey I'm a little worried about Anatoly the flood currents are really strong Ugh. once Kryn makes up her mind on something it has to happen I definitely won't debate her on it well, that led to him losing his arms and legs, didn't it? Have you seen the knife she carries around? I don't know where she got it. She got it from us. But she had it on her at all times. Do you think it's for self-defense? Or... You interrupt Gregor. Cooking? Yeah. I mean, she hasn't cooked anything here. But... Gregor continues to babble incoherently. You feign concern and nod politely. Whoops. He noticed you weren't actively listening to him. Yeah. Just stand up to her when the time comes, alright? Gregor smiles a little bit. You're sure he'll remember that? Have we maxed our level out? I think we have. Yay! Five stars, or five hearts, I should say, with Gregor. I don't know what that's going to do for us. Maybe unlock a different ending? I know you'll do the right thing. Thanks. You decide to call everyone together for a meeting. Okay. So this is where I feel like things could change a little bit. Anatoly, you okay, little guy? Anatoly looks pale like he's going to pass out. Anatoly, have you made a decision? Yes, I'll help you all out. I promise. Thank you, Anatoly. Big tears roll down Gregor's cheeks. I'll miss you, big guy. I'll miss you too, little guy. Hmm. Thank you, Anatoly. I know this wasn't easy, but it's for the best. So here is where he leaves. And unfortunately, we didn't max our bond out with him, so I don't know if, like, you know, that would have led to a different ending. Corinne? Yes? I... Gregor looks at you expectantly. Did you want to say anything to Anatoly? You say nothing. See, I think if we max our bond out, we could have said something to him there. Uh, I... Goodbye, Anatoly. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck, little guy. 
Anatoly has left the cabin. Yeah, so there we go, he's gone again. See you soon, little guy. Hmm. Guess all we can do now is wait. Good night. Uh, Craig goes to bed to sleep. I... I didn't tell him the truth. Yeah, we've seen all this. Gregor is getting choked up. I didn't tell him, and I'm missing him already, because I think he really liked... Uh, I think he kind of, like, romantically liked uh, Anatoly. Gregor curls up on the couch for the night, turning his back on you. So this is all the same as before once again. Um, you hear a scraping from the floor. The red-haired woman won't let him live, will she? It seems like the day times are pretty much the same, but the times with Potato and our nightmares and stuff afterwards, they do change on New Game Plus. Because it's like we're in the loop right now, the, t the sort of repeating loop, and he already knows what's going to happen. Uh, Potato says, too ravenous at this point. The more she consumes, the stronger she gets. At what cost? Sometimes staying silent works better. Just walk away and pretend you're innocent later. What a terrible perspective Potato has provided. The Chompettes would never have listened to this crap. You fall asleep, thinking about what Potato told you. You have a strange dream. It's lying on the table in front of you. You take off the glasses first, partially cracked, and set them down next to the workbench. Oh yeah, we've seen this. This is where he saws up the, uh, the body of um, Anatoly, basically. So yeah, there's little things that have changed. You wake in a completely different place. Did... Did you sleepwalk or... You found some meat? Everybody's still asleep. This would be a nice surprise after yesterday's events. You decide to cook breakfast for everyone. Uh, yeah, we've seen this. Just gonna skip it. What is that smell? Give it to me. Don't argue. We'll just skip until we get some choices again, and then we'll try and make um, some different choices this time, guys, because we have, like, we've seen all of this. Like, I don't want to have to read it all again. Okay, so this is where she asks if we'll help poison Gregor. So maybe this time we actually do. I don't know. Let's have a look. Will you do this for me? Last time we said no. As we've made a save this time, let's say yes. I knew you would thank you. You nod. She's learning quickly. It looks like Corinne will remember that. Okay, so we've got four hearts with Corinne now. Our relationship is stronger. I don't think we maxed out her hearts on the first playthrough. Corinne hands you a vial of mysterious liquid and you add it to Gregor's mug. Gregor, it's been quite a while since you've had some water. Come drink this. Why are you so sad? Gregor looks frightened. I can't stop thinking about the little guy. I can't even remember what happened before we arrived. It just never ends. I miss Anatoly and Mariah. Let us toast to Anatoly. And Mariah. They'll always be inside of us, Gregor, quite literally. Can't change that now. Gregor begins to weep. You're right. We're having it raw tonight, Gregor. What? Eating raw meat is one of life's greatest gambles. Get awfully sick or... Gregor slowly puts the meat in his mouth, ignoring the smell. Ah! Oh. He swallows each bite with a wince on his face. Ah. Uh. Trying not to get sick. I'll never forget the time I first met Anatoly. We were teenagers. I was chopping firewood outside the house. Anatoly brought over a butterfly net filled with them. He introduced himself and asked me if I wanted to hold one of the butterflies. I had never held one before. He told me to not crush it between my large paws. He did have miniaturish hands himself, so I get it. Anato- Anna- Corinne, what did you put in this water? Would you do anything to save your friends, Gregor? Of course. Gregor's eyes start to droop. What the hell was Corinne's liquid? I think it'd be best to have an early bedtime tonight. Let me help you onto the couch, Gregor. 
So we helped her this time. We got slightly different dialogue and stuff because of it as well. He says, thank you, Corinne, and he basically passes out cold. Thank you. I'll do the rest. This is where she chops his arms and legs off. Even if he screams, please ignore Gregor when he wakes up. Okay? You don't want to interrupt Corinne with this. You leave her alone, going into the bedroom and crawling into the bed Anatoly slept in. You fall asleep almost instantly. So we are getting little, little changes here and there. I'm kind of enjoying these changes. I'm wondering if we get some new endings now. Corinne says, wake up sleepyhead. Oh my god, look at her face. I knew this game would have jump scares in it. You were having a nightmare. That's definitely different to how it was before. Like 100%. I'm still having a nightmare. Look at you. Gregor is waiting for you. Man, that was horrible. You get out of bed and follow Corinne to the couch. Gregor says, huh. You were the only person that didn't laugh at me for being afraid of a marmot. When I was nine, a friend and I were playing in the woods. We were far from home, about an hour away. My friend found some baby marmots, probably only a few weeks old. He was so busy playing with them, he didn't notice a boar mother and piglet behind him. The boar thought he was too close to its child, so it ended up goring him in the lung with one of her tusks. The wheezing, those shortened breaths. He was gasping for air as his lungs filled with blood and there was nothing I could do to stop the bleeding. It took me an entire day to carry the body back to his house. I was so weak, I had to take breaks every few minutes. When I arrived at his parents' house, it was completely pitch black out. My hands shook as I laid his body at the door, I was almost as cold as he was. When his mother finally opened the door, I will never forget that scream as long as I live. He's seen some things, this Grugor character. I never want to let anyone down again with my weaknesses, ever. So I pushed myself to the breaking point as a teenager, getting stronger every week. I should have never left Ukraine. Yes, yeah, so that's conf confirmation there all from Ukraine. As we suspected, Grigor looks like he's about to cry. Thank you. Oh, what the heck? That is horrible. That is literally horrifying. Grigor? Man, oh my god, what the heck? That is truly the stuff of nightmares right there, guys. So this is Corinne looking absolutely demonic. I think he's trying to speak. What is it, Gregor? You tell Corinne that Gregor has died. He hasn't spoiled yet. Let me show you the rest of him. Alright, Corinne shuffles over to the basement door, opening the lock with the knife. Potato comes back and says, why wait until she's in the basement? Take back the knife and end her life. You explain how difficult it is to get blood out of wood. Your laziness is unbelievable. The minute those four entered the cabin, you should have killed all of them. You're getting soft. You nursed a weakened butcher back to health. What if she ends up killing you now? I brought you the key. When she goes downstairs, lock the door behind her with a deadbolt. Then let her rot. Corinne, Potato, might have been the greatest allies in another life. You need to stop her before it's too late. You walk over to the basement door. Okay. So this is all different. Where's Corinne? There she is. She's actually inside. When are you fixing this hole? You can feel her breath coming through a crack of a door. You lock the basement door. What the hell are you doing? Goodbye, Corinne. And she fades off. She's gone. She slips into the darkness. You climb on the couch to rest, waiting for the basement noises to become silent. 
D12. Okay. Mariah was correct. It's freezing over here. The frigid air swirls visibly in front of you. The basement noises have completely stopped. What do you want to do? Hmm. So we can actually do some stuff in this room now. Uh, look under the couch, because we've never checked under the couch. Lots of cobwebs, thankfully no spiders. Let's do it again. You notice a child's toy. How did this get under here? Let's look under the couch again. It's a small wooden boat. That's weird. No ports anywhere near here. It looks like there's a name engraved on it. Raziel, maybe. Maybe Bread would want this. So, maybe that is like... Our name, Raziel. Let's check under the couch again. Bread's not around right now. You'll hold on to it until the moment is right. Alright, let's check the bookshelf then. There's various books on a wide variety of topics. No time to read them now though. You take a closer look at the subjects. Cooking, herbalism, skinning. Books that are good for surviving in the wilderness. You take another look at the subjects. Carpentry, metalworking, tailoring. Books that are good for crafting in the wilderness. And then Potato appears. Wasting time reading books? You were just browsing. Sure. Why not read this one? Potato nudges one of the books. The edges of the pages are a little singed. This was saved from a book burning. I wonder why. One may in truth proceed against such a man as against a person who is gravely suspect, but he is not to be condemned in his absence and without a hearing. And yet the suspicion may be very grave, and we cannot refrain from suspecting these people, for their frivolous assertions do certainly seem to affect the purity of the faith. For there are three kinds of suspicion. A light suspicion, a serious suspicion, and a grave suspicion. Hmm, okay. You take the singed book with you. I'd say your entire life has been a grave suspicion. It's a shame you never went to trial for anything. That would never happen. Carrying around a book would be a burden, so you put it back. The rest of the books are boring. Okay, so let's um, eat a meal then, I guess. You decide to have a quick lunch at the table. I really don't like that sound. She escaped. That's horrible. Like, that is straight up nightmare fuel. Oh man, okay. You wake in a cold sweat. Wake up, sleepyhead, says Corinne. Oh my god, that was actually creepy as hell. And I got like the goosebumps on my arms, like <laughs> hair standing up. I didn't expect it to get that like uh, decomposed, I guess. Corinne says you were having a nightmare. Oh wow, the sheets are completely soaked. Are you wetting the bed? You feel underneath you. Gross. You must have broke a fever because the sweat is everywhere. Don't worry, we can wash them in the basement. Just unlock the door and we'll make a day of it. You're not that slow with laundry. Come with me, I have something to show you. You cautiously get up, following Corinne out of the bedroom. The basement door was already open. I'm hungry. Let's get something from the basement. You feel the cold presence of Kryn behind you. Goodbye. Stop, says Potato. Grab on the railing. You do so, feeling a slight push on your back. You feel the presence leaving. That was a close one. Kryn will try everything in her power to kill you. Tread cautiously downstairs. Why are you helping me, Potato? Because I pity what you've become. You work your way down to the bottom of the stairs. Right, we finally got to the bottom. This is where things should change. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel right. Behind you. I hate that. You feel around the wall blindly and locate the light switch. Found you, says Potato. Corinne's grown stronger than you as of late. Consuming her friends has imbued her with a rage. She's lost in the abyss, and nothing but death can end this madness. 
I hope you've prepared for what comes next. I think we're as prepared as we can be, so let's do this. You can feel something creeping up in front of you. Hello! Hello, says Cabbage. Cabbage, what are you? Cabbage! It cabbage. took us forever to move the rubble you put in the mouse holes. Oh, so Potato trapped them. Chompettes, <laughs> come out. Here they are. Never fear, Onion is here. Bread says, like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion. Raspberry! Sometimes merry, raspberry. What lie did you tell them, Potato? That you had moved on? Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Will you let us go? You shake your head. Someday, maybe. Chompettes? Cabbage! You can't allow Corinne to take over the cabin. She's much worse than you, Stinky. Did you see what she did to Gregor? Unhinged. She's a cut above you right now. <laughs> you don't need to help us with this. Just remember what she's done. Channel that anger. She's just like Potato now, right? I'm still here, Cabbage. <laughs> and as punishment for earlier, we're locking you in the room again, Potato. No chompette trial needed. So that's why Potato always ends up locked in a room. It's because he locks them up as well. You got company down here, Potato. Oh. One of us should hide the key. That's enough. No need to twist the knife. <laughs> uh, good luck. Chompettes, yes, let's hey, help out. Hey, hey. The Chompettes get into position behind you, ready for what's next. You feel around the wall blindly and locate the light switch. Found you. Yeah, here's Corinne again. And um, she says, let's end this. Hey. But once again, we can't actually fight her. It's all like, just goes straight to the uh, the end sequence. But I wonder if it's going to change the game because this did change last time. Yeah, this is different again. She's now lying down on the ground. So we kind of get a bit more of this sequence each time it seems. She's dead. Ooh, this is different. That looks like a turnip. <laughs> I don't know why I got so excited about that. Cabbage. Look, he's trying to speak. <laughs> don't be shy. Cabbage. Try again. <laughs> Might take a few more days. Welcome to the Chompettes, turnip. Huh. So wait, was the turnip meant to be Corinne after she finally dies? Or was that meant to be us? I always thought Potato was meant to be like represent us. Because I think each of the Chompettes represents someone, right? I'm kind of lost, guys. I'm going to have to really think about this story. I don't know if I'll do like a story like explained video on this. I might do. But I think that's like the true ending by the look of it. Because we've got like a different screen now. It's white. And we actually saw like Corinne finally like dead on the ground. So, I don't know, that could be the, the final ending. I think we've had like five endings by now, right? If you count the ending we originally got. Whee, okay guys, well that was the new game plus mode and I think we've probably still got a few endings to find and unlock, but I think you know, we've played through all the main modes. We've got a selection of different endings now. What I may do is if I find any more endings, I'll put them into the end of this video. But I don't know. I might just upload the video as it is because I've been recording for a long time now. So, um, yeah, I think we got most of the endings there, but there's probably a few we haven't quite unlocked yet. Uh, either way, that was Cooking Companions. I might end it there. I might do a little bit more on this game. Oh, my God, that's creepy at the top of the screen. Um... But yeah, I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was really cool. And there's definitely a lot of sort of story to unlock there and things to keep going back to discover. And I really like it when games do that. So overall, I'd recommend this game. I don't quite think it was as good as Doki Doki Literature Club, which is still like the gold standard in the visual novel, like horror genre for me. But it was definitely worth playing and definitely a good game. But I would recommend you guys check out. If you did enjoy this playthrough, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll see you all on the next one.